What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Wrestling has a long tradition of football players switching over from the gridiron to the squared circle, some with success and others not so much. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 25 football players who became wrestlers. Now, Due to the large number of wrestlers who played college football, we're only listing individuals who played at the professional level. This can be anything from the NFL to the Canadian Football League and other professional level teams. For purposes of what qualifies as becoming a wrestler, it has to be more than a handful of matches, which excludes football stars such as Lawrence Taylor, Rob Gronkowski and Kevin Green. Number 1. Bill Goldberg One of the most successful football players turned wrestlers, Big Bad Bill played defensive tackle for the Atlanta Falcons, Los Angeles Rams and the CFL's first American-based team, the Sacramento Goldminers, then was drafted to the Carolina Panthers, although he never played for them. After tearing his lower abdomen off his pelvis, Goldberg decided to call it a wrap. During his time rehabbing from his injury, Goldberg caught WCW's attention when Sting and Lex Luger encouraged him to try things out in the squared circle in 1996. A year later, Goldberg was on the road to superstardom in Ted Turner's promotion. Number 2. Ernie the Cat Lad Although Goldberg is the best known football player from contemporary times, Ernie Ladd wasn't just a great wrestler, but a great football player. The Big Cat played defensive tackle for the AFL's San Diego Chargers, this was prior to the AFL merging with the NFL, the Houston Oilers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Like many of his contemporaries who played football and wrestled, Ladd found wrestling to pay much more than football. Football salaries were surprisingly low at this time. His football honours include the AFL Championship in 1963 and four appearances on the AFL All-Star Squad. Ladd also helped organise the AFL's players' boycott of the 1965 All-Star Game after players experienced racism in the game's venue, New Orleans. The 6'9 Ladd was a natural for the ring and found championship success wherever he worked. Number 3. Wahoo McDaniel Edward McDaniel was a colourful character on and off the gridiron, playing for the Houston Oilers, where he won an AFL championship in 1960, the Denver Broncos, the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins. The Native American star became a beloved fixture with the Jets, with the announcer saying, tackle made by guess who? To which the fans replied, wahoo! Long before Rod Smart emblazoned a he hate me was seen on an XFL jersey, McDaniel displayed Wahoo on his jersey, another way to set himself apart from the other football players. Wahoo was a featured player in whatever territory he worked, but is best known for his campaigns in Jim Crockett promotions. Number 4. Duke Drozdov The man who tried to subtly slide Road Warrior Hawk out of the Legion of Doom earned his nickname Puke after he barfed on a football during an episode of Monday Night Football. Darren Drozdov played nose tackle for the Denver Broncos before a brief run in the CFL's Montreal Alouettes. Drozdov was famously seen in the documentary Beyond the Mat where he demonstrated his ability to vomit on command in front of Vince McMahon as the WWF's head honcho bellowed, He's gonna, he's coming at puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna puke! He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna puke! Sadly, his WWF career was cut short after an in-ring accident paralyzed him. Number 5. Monty Brown Long before he prowled TNA wrestling as Monty Brown, he played as a linebacker for the Buffalo Bills and the New England Patriots, playing for the Bills at their losing bid in Super Bowl XXVIII. After a few years in TNA, Brown jumped to the WWE, working in its version of ECW as Marcus Corvan, but he retired from wrestling in order to care for his sister's children when she passed away. Number 6. Steve Mungo McMichael the once coach for the Chicago Bears, Mike Dichter, once called him the toughest player he ever coached. Steve McMichael played defensive tackle for the New England Patriots and the Green Bay Packers, but he's best known for his time as a Chicago Bear, playing for the Bears from 1981 to 1993, including their Super Bowl win at Super Bowl XX. McMichael played in the Pro Bowl two years and was a two-time All-Pro. He's best known for his transition from color commentator on Nitro into an in-ring performer after he betrayed fellow football player Kevin Green during a match against Ric Flair and Arn Anderson, joining the Horsemen. While some fans have criticized Mongo's role as a Horseman, Ric Flair has repeatedly defended him and calls him one of his favorite Horsemen. Number 7. JBL Although John Layfield didn't last long with the Los Angeles Raiders, he did play as a right tackle for the World League of American Footballs, qualifying him for our list. 
While his football career was uneventful, his wrestling career saw a good amount of success, including his famous team the APA, and his later remake as JBL, the wealthy investor who won the WWE Championship, holding it for nearly a year. Number 8. Leo the Lion Nomellini Leo enjoyed 10 Pro Bowl appearances during his 14 years as a San Francisco 49er, including being picked as an All-Pro six times and a 1950s All-Decade team. He performed as an offensive tackle and defensive tackle during his NFL career. He then worked in NWA San Francisco Territory during part of his football career, then worked for the NWA Minneapolis promotion. He's arguably one of the most successful gridiron giants on this list. Number 9. Ahmed Johnson Anthony Norris played as a middle linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys for two seasons, but did not play during the regular season. His wrestling career proved more successful moving from the Global Wrestling Federation to the WWF, where he became the first African-American Intercontinental Champion. A short run in WCW and the independent circuit was an anticlimactic end to his career. Number 10. Brian Pillman Flying Brian Pillman defied the odds, vying for a career in the NFL despite his small stature. Brief runs on the Cincinnati Bengals and the Buffalo Bills were followed by a short stint in the CFL, but Pillman became much better known for his high-flying matches in Calgary Stampede, WCW, ECW and the WWF before his untimely death at the age of 35. Number 11. Vader Leon White was a third-round draft pick in the NFL's 1978 draft, signing with the Los Angeles Rams where he played during the NFC Championship season. A career-ending injury finished his NFL career after one season, but brighter things lay ahead. He would work in the AWA, Europe's Catch Wrestling Association, and achieve stardom in New Japan Pro Wrestling and WCW before jumping to the WWF. Number 12. Bill Watts Bill Watts played for the Houston Oilers, the Minnesota Vikings, and an NFL farm team before pursuing the much more financially lucrative world of professional wrestling, both as a wrestler and as a booker. Number 13. Tito Santana the former Intercontinental Champion played tight end briefly for the Kansas City Chiefs before being cut and finding work as a member of the CFL's British Columbia Lions. Working as Tito Santana, he found success in the WWF after honing his skills in the NWA's Florida and Georgia territories, as well as the AWA. Santana would hold the Intercontinental Championship twice and the WWF Tag Team Championship twice, eventually entering the WWE Hall of Fame. Number 14. Baron Corbin the man now known as King Corbin assigned with the Indianapolis Colts in April 2009 after going undrafted into the 2009 NFL Draft. He was released by the Colts on September 5th and then signed a future contract with the Arizona Cardinals in 2010, but he was released from the Cardinals on September 3rd and signed to the team's practice squad in September 6th. With a very lukewarm career in professional football, he signed with the WWE in August of 2012. Corbin has since gone up the ranks and is now one of the biggest superstars on the blue brand. Number 15. Ron Simmons Defensive tackle Ron Simmons played for the Cleveland Browns in 1981 and 1982 before joining the upstart USFL, playing for the Tampa Bay Bandits alongside future WCW colleague Lex Luger. Simmons had success as a wrestler, beginning his career in Jim Crocker Promotions and continuing as it became WCW, where he eventually won the WCW World Heavyweight Championship, becoming the promotion's first African-American world champ. Simmons later performed in the WWF as Farouk and entered the WWE Hall of Fame in 2012. Number 16. Lex Luger the New York native played pro ball for the CFL's Montreal Alouettes, competing in the league's championship Grey Cup game in a losing effort. He had a cup of coffee with the NFL's Green Bay Packers before playing in the USFL's Tampa Bay Bandits, Memphis Showboats and Jacksonville Bulls. After football, his impressive physique opened the door for a successful career in professional wrestling, including numerous titles in Jim Crocker Promotions and WCW, as well as a memorable run in the WWF. Number 17. Titus O'Neill Thaddeus Michael Bullard Sr. played college football for the University of Florida and thereafter played in the Arena Football League. Thaddeus, whose position was defensive end, played in Arena Football League from 2003 to 2007 with the Utah Blaze, Tampa Bay Storm, Las Vegas Gladiators and Carolina Cobras. He would move on to professional wrestling in 2009, signing a developmental deal with the WWE's Developmental Territory Florida Championship Wrestling. Titus would move up to the main roster, forming several successful teams including as the primetime players with Darren Young, Slater Gator with Heath Slater, and Apollo Crews as Titus Worldwide. Number 18. Paul Orndorff 
The man who became known as Mr. Wonderful in the wrestling world was drafted to the NFL in 1973, but was unable to play for either the New Orleans Saints or Kansas City Chiefs because he couldn't pass a physical. Orndorff did make it into the gridiron for the World Football League's Jacksonville Sharks, playing for one season. Not long after, the wrestling well called and Orndorff found success in the territories before major success in the WWF as an arrogant heel feuding with Hulk Hogan including their main event program at the inaugural WrestleMania. Number 19. Dick the Bruiser Tough as nails, William Afflis terrorized the football world as a lineman for the Green Bay Packers. It was on the gridiron where he suffered a larynx injury, resulting in his trademark gravelly voice. He transformed into Dick the Bruiser, quickly becoming a mainstay in the Midwest and an icon in the AWA. Dick the Bruiser played a role in the infamous Madison Square Garden wrestling riot of 1957 that resulted in the Bruiser's lifetime ban from New York. Number 20. Roman Reigns Long before opponents were dumping dog food on him, Joseph Anawai had a professional football career. The Minnesota Vikings signed him in 2007 only for a leukemia diagnosis to put things on hold. A subsequent signing with the Jacksonville Jaguars went nowhere, but Anawahi did play a season for the CFL's Edmonton Eskimos. True success awaited him when he joined the WWE, transforming into Roman Reigns and exploding on the main roster as a member of the Shield, followed by solo success as the Big Dog, winning the WWE and Universal Championships amongst other belts. Number 21. Vern Gagne a talented amateur wrestler, Gagne served as an alternate for the US freestyle wrestling team for the 1948 Olympics, but Gagne was also a gifted football player. The Chicago Bears drafted Gagne in 1947, but legend has it he chose the Green Bay Packers when he was told he couldn't play football and wrestle if he signed with the Bears. Gagne's time as a defensive end didn't last long, as he preferred the much more financially lucrative world of professional wrestling, becoming one of the industry's top stars during the golden age of professional wrestling and eventually launching his own promotion, the American Wrestling Association. Number 22. Jim Duggan Duggan's NFL career with the Atlanta Falcons was cut short by knee injuries, but a long career as a professional wrestler awaited him. Duggan would break out into stardom in Bill Watts' Mid-South Wrestling before signing with the WWF and becoming one of its most beloved babyfaces, defending America against the promotion's top foreign heels. Number 23. The Rock Dwayne Johnson has accomplished so much besides his Hall of Fame-worthy wrestling career that many people forget he had a brief stint as a linebacker with the CFL's Calgary Stampeders before entering the wild world of wrestling. Success quickly followed and The Rock became a key component of the Attitude Era's success before finding equal success as a Hollywood actor. Number 24. Mojo Rawley Dean Mutati had two short runs in the NFL, playing on defensive for the Green Bay Packers during the 2009 preseason before being cut, then signing with the Arizona Cardinals in 2010 before an injury at training camp saw focus on his recovery. During this time, he chose a WWE career, signing with the WWE in 2012. Thus far, Rawley's biggest success has been winning the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal in 2017. And lastly, number 25, Fritz Von Erich. Jack Adkinson's time in the world of professional football was limited, but he definitely left his mark in wrestling. Finding success as the much-feared kayfabe Nazi Fritz Von Erich, then success operating world-class championship wrestling where his sons competed. But there you have it guys, 25 professional football players who became wrestlers. Did any of these names surprise you? Keep in mind this list isn't exhaustive, but WrestleMania will revisit it if you'd like to see another video. Are there any football players right now you'd like to see compete in the ring? Be sure to leave your comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.